Did you remember to order our favorite pizza? Yep, half anchovy, half kelp. Good. I ordered it six months ago. Then it should be here any minute. I certainly hope so. Perfect. Just in time for Beekman's World. Fact. In a lifetime, the human body produces more than 25,000 quarts of saliva. Enough to fill two swimming pools with spit. I'm Beekman, and you've just broken into Beekman's World! is our world, and this is my world. We'll be using my world to better understand our world. Nice shot, Ethan. I high five myself. <laughs> All right, please feed me some three point questions. I got a question for you. Yeah? Who'd want to swim in a pool filled with saliva? Mark Spitz. <clears throat> Sorry I asked. Speaking of asking. Yep. James Fenmore yeah. of Sanford, Florida asks, Dear Beekman, how much blood is in the average human body? Hmm, let me see. How are we gonna demonstrate this? Let's drain Josie. <laughs> hey, hey, hi guys. Nah, she's no fun without her blood. One, two, three, four, five. The average person has about five liters or 10 and a half pints of blood in their body. Oh, this one may stump you, Beekman. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Flo Mills uh -huh. from Corpus Christi, Texas, asks, Dear Beekman, how many veins are there in my body? Hmm. Yeah, let me see here. Uh, six times five plus four. I tell you what, let me put it this way. If you took the average person's veins and arteries and laid them out end to end, they would reach over 60,000 miles long. Of course, your mileage may vary. Or to put it another way, uh, Ray, could I have my globe back, please? Thank you. Over 60,000 miles is long enough to wrap a person's veins around the Earth about two and a half times. I'd show you myself, but uh, I'm kind of attached to my veins. This one is in a similar vein. Yeah. It's from Rene de la Prade of Nicasio, uh -huh. California. Rene asks, why do we have blood? Oh, well, blood has three full-time jobs. First, it delivers food and oxygen to the billions of cells, cells are the smallest units of you, that are in your body. My name is Blood, and I'm your waiter for this evening. My name is Cell, and I'm gonna be your waitee for this evening. Well, Cell, today we got a very nice hemoglobin. Now, this hemoglobin should come with a side order of oxygen, eh? Yes, I like that. Oh, okay, that's nice. Now, we also have a beautiful enzyme. Yes, now that enzyme will allow you, my little cell, to carry out the necessary chemical processes that otherwise would be impossible. Yes, now may I suggest a nice white corpuscle to go with the date? Oh, that'd be lovely. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> so, blood's first job is to deliver food and oxygen to the cells of the body. And blood's second job is to remove the cell's waste products. Excuse me, cell lady. Did you enjoy your dinner? Yeah, I went down. I'm just gonna take these dirty dishes to the kidneys and the lungs for cleaning up. The kidneys, they filter out the waste 
products and our lungs expel carbon dioxide into the air. The third job of the blood is to protect the body against germs. Yo, Sally, is this seat taken or what? Why no? Why don't you take it across the street? <laughs> I like that. You got a sense of humor. You know. <laughs> so, you come here often? What's your sign? You know, I'm into Stairmaster myself. It frames up my... Oh, get uh... lost. You make me sick. Sick, 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 sick. Excuse me, Miss Cell Lady. Is this germ bugging you? Uh, yes. Actually, he is, Officer Leukocyte. All right. Let's go, you filthy parasite. You blood-sucking weasel. Why, you dirty rat. All right, all right, enough of your little skit. Don't you people realize that I am an actor? I have done dinner theater at every truck stop in this state. Do you understand? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you infect can and will be held against you. I am not an animal. I am an actor. So, Rene de la Prada of Nicasio, California, your blood delivers food and oxygen to your cells, removes waste products from your cells, and defends your body against disease. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly what's going on inside your body at this very moment. Coming up next, Lester takes the plunge. <laughs> Don't go away. Bateman's World will be right back. And now, back to Bateman's World. Are you ready? It's time to inundate your intellect. Here he is, the umpire of understanding, the dean of discovery, the major d of memory, the one, the only, the big <laughs> Go ahead and ask. I'm up to the task. The Greyhound, which is the fastest dog, can reach speeds of up to 41.7 miles per hour. But not at rush hour. Have you ever noticed that it's impossible to rush any place during rush hour? But it's not impossible to rush during Beak Mania. More questions. Who does his hair? General Electric? Next question. It's the longest word in the English language. Thanks. Deb well, there's lots of scientific words that go on forever. But for your regular day-to-day -day usage, try Floxunasu Nihila Pillification. Oh, yeah, I use that word every day. <laughs> in your dreams. <laughs> it has 29 letters. How is that possible? There are only 26 in the alphabet. <laughs> And it means the act of judging a bit of information to be utterly worthless. If they gave a Nobel Prize for worthless information, you'd be on a plane to Stockholm this minute, Lester. Boy, that's, that's perfect, Josie. You just flocked mm -hmm. to Nasu pillificated. <laughs> Did I get paid extra for it? In knowledge only, Josie. You guys have been trying to stump me. Now it's my turn to stump you. Time for... The Beekman Challenge. Challenge. Challenge! I defy you, Lester, to jam this plunger handle through this tissue. Oh, come on, that's too easy. I've been known to jam a sneeze through a tissue. I'm waiting. It's a trick. Hey, I don't do tricks. It must be something. We talking one or two ply tissue? One. Let's see. Quilted or unquilted? Unquilted. Sanded or unsanded? It doesn't matter. But I do hope that people use recycled paper. Because it's strong. No, because it's better for the environment. Let me tell you what you'll need to face the Beekman Challenge. You'll need a tissue. A paper towel tube. A rubber band. A plunger. A bunch of salt. 
Here we go. First, take your paper towel tube and using the rubber band, attach the tissue Achoo. like this. Hey, what's the tube for? You'll find out soon, my strange and furry friend. Take your salt and pour it in a depth of at least six inches into the tube like that. Is it laundry time yet? Yes, it is. But you know, you can use a mop or a broom handle or anything similar. Plunger, please. Oh, no, not the business end, please. The other end. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Here we go. Plunger handle in and push. <laughs> so, boom. Zaloom, you give me that thing. Good luck. I'll mitilize it. Yeah. I'll annihilate it. I'll have it screaming for mercy. Jeez, what happened? How did that work? Elementary, my dear Ratson. Activate the boboscope, please. You see, there are lots and lots of tiny air spaces between the grains of salt. When the plunger strikes, the energy from the blow goes into pushing the salt crystals closer together and against the sides of the tube. This absorbs the entire force of the blow. There's no energy left to tear the tissue. Any questions? Yeah. So who does do your hair, anyway? Coming up next, the stuff dreams are made of. Stay with us. Please. Beekman's world will be right back. And now, back to Beekman's world. And now, back to Beekman's world. And the answer man himself, Beekman! <laughs> I guess you got nothing more to say. So management says you are being replaced. Replaced by me. Replaced with Lester's oil where all the royals are stage, and all the men and women merely players. Of course, uh, you all know my strange and furless friend, Beacon. I'm not wearing clothes. My, my feet can't move. I, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. What, what happened to my voice? Hey, wake up, what, 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 what happened? What? Are you all right? Hey, looks like you had a bad dream. Oh, wow, I did. I did have a bit. Why, you were in it, Lester. So were you, Josie. No, not you, Toto. You know, I have a bad dream like that every day. And the two of you are always in it. Except I'm not sleeping. No, you're lucky, Beekman. It was just your imagination. Just my imagination? Hey, your imagination's one of the best things you have. Your imagination allows you to envision things that aren't there. Uh, I speak. You're not quite there. Well, now I am. Did I miss anything? Oh, yeah. This came while you were snoozing. Yeah? Oh, great. Let's see. Dear Beekman, what is the stuff that dreams are made of? Signed, Glenn Peck, San Rafael, California. How convenient. <laughs> What's all this stuff got to do with dreams? Shopping is a lot like life, Josie. Oh, I know. There's just too much to choose from. Yeah, that's true. And when we shop, we collect things. And we go through life collecting things, like experiences, information, memories, pictures of things. Oh, the kind of stuff that stays in your mind. Bingo. Everyone has something called the conscious mind. And their unconscious mind. It's the way these two things work together which gives each of us our own individual imagination. Oh, our own idea power. But a bing. Anyway, your conscious mind is all the things you're aware of. Like what time it is, what you're thinking, what you're doing, or like that terrible itch I've got on my back that I can't quite reach in the... Oh, why, thank you, Ray. My conscious mind thanks you, Ray. And my conscious mind processes all these experiences and information and stores all of them 
in my memory. So I'm using my conscious mind right now. No, I tried that once. It just wasn't me. The unconscious mind is a little trickier. Unconscious. The division of the psyche not subject to direct conscious observation, but inferred from its effects on conscious processes and behavior. What he means is, <clears throat> the unconscious mind is not limited to reality. It's more playful. It's always working, always doing. But when the conscious mind goes to sleep, that's when the unconscious mind can come out to party. The unconscious mind is the writer of our dreams. Let's do a little demonstration of how these two parts of the mind function. Josie, when I hold up an object, you just tell us what it is. Lester, you tell us what it makes you imagine. So I'm like the conscious mind. And I'm sort of like the unconscious mind. Glad we got that settled. So, what is this? Um, lobster. Okay, right now I'm imagining melted butter, siphon turf night at Mario's, grown-ups wearing dopey-looking bibs. Very good. How about this? Bicycle wheel. I'm seeing a space station, the time I scrape my knee, the soapbox derby. Great. And what about this? Palm tree. I'm seeing pink flamingos, my trip to Florida, the time I got hit on the head with a coconut. Time to put all this stuff. The time stuff. I got hit on the head with a coconut, the time I got hit on the head with a coconut. That's good, Lester. Time to put all this stuff into the memory chest. Let's say this chest is my memory, and all the stuff I'm putting in here are the things I think about and remember. Oh, 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 oh gosh. I'm tired all of a sudden. It feels like my conscious mind is conking out on me. Oh, I'm falling asleep. I'm Beekman's unconscious. I'm gonna put together a dream from some of my experiences, memories, my fears, desires, and a lot of other things in my imagination and in my memory chest. Now, what should be in my dream? Well, I'm always in my dream, so here I am, ready to go. What do I wanna be doing? I've always wanted to ride a horse, so I've got a horse, and I'm ready to go for a ride. I stop in front of a cave. I've always been intrigued by caves. There it is. I dismount the horse. I walk towards the cave. Ooh, I've been riding too long. I enter the cave, and yikes, yikes. it's dark in here. Dark in here. Oof, Oof, so damp. So damn. Man, does it bad. smell does it bad. Smell bad. I don't like this. I'd rather be at the beach. Yeah, I'm playing in the sand at the beach. The sea breeze is blowing in my face. Beautiful ocean mist. Ah, it's so refreshing. When all of a sudden, a giant lobster comes out of the ocean, grabs me in its claws. I try to get away. I'm terrified. It's horrible, but my legs won't move. And all of a... Yeah, wait a minute. I don't like this dream. It isn't fun anymore. You know what? I don't have to keep dreaming it. Oh, good thing I cut out of that one. Yikes. Hey, chill out, Beekman. It was only a dream. Yeah, but it was just like it was real. You know, our imagination can give us nightmares just as scary as the best horror movies. After all, you know, movies are made by people who use their imaginations. You know, you're right. I don't think I'll ever sleep again. You know, maybe this will help. Sometimes you can actually choose what you dream about. I'll tell you how after this. Beekman's World will be right back. And now, back to Beekman's World. 
If you have a question about how the world works, just write us at... Beekman's World, P.O. Box 30087, Kansas City, Missouri, zip code 64112. And the guy with the big hair will try to find you an answer. The way you can choose your dreams is, right before you go to sleep, think about someone or something you want to dream about. Think of everything that person or thing means to you. Hey, if it doesn't work the first time, don't give up. It'll work eventually. And when it does, bada bing, bam, boom, fantastic. Mm, thanks. That was dreamy. So this is the stuff that dreams are made of. Sweet dreams to all of you. And see you next time on Beekman's World. Or maybe even sooner. In your dreams, Beekman. Pretty heady stuff, Don. Don! Hmm? Oh, sorry. I was just daydreaming that I was eating a sardine sandwich on the deck of a Caribbean cruise ship. Ooh, would it be too much trouble to imagine me there with you? Sorry, Herb. Use your own imagination for a change. Remember, if you try any of our experiments, do them with an adult in exactly the way we do, taking all the safety precautions. <laughs>